Hi there. Let's look at another amazing game, which was kind of featured in the Queen's Gambit. So Beth was playing against Borgov in episode four. And in fact, this was a fantastic game played in 1965 between Leonard Stein against Alexander Matanovich. Now, Stein died too young, really. He died at the young age of 38. He achieved so much, though. Uh, Fisher, in his memorable games book, wrote of his encounter with Stein as when champions meet. A classic Roy Lopez, well worth playing through that game as well. Fisher versus Stein. And Stein, you know, checking details at Wiki, uh, was a Soviet chess grandmaster from Ukraine. He won three USSR chess championships in the 1960s, 1963, 65 and 66, and was among the world's top 10 players during that era. From 1963 to his premature death in 1973, he was in the top 10 players in the world or just outside that range. It was one of the few players who had an even score against Smyslov, Tigram Trozin, and Botvinnik. He had plus records against Mikhail Tell, Spassky, and Paul Garez. So he defeated many of the top players in his era. His opponent, playing with the black pieces, was Alexander Matonovic, who is also pretty notable, actually, extremely notable, a Serbian chess grandmaster. He's the author of the classic Chess Encyclopedia, and editor-in-chief of Chess Informant. So this kept people up to date with the chess games before the rise of the internet. It was very, it was much more important than now. I mean, it's still important. And he's still alive and kicking, actually, thankfully, at the ripe old age of 90. So in this game, Beth playing white played... Well, if, it, if we had seen the whole game, we only saw the final position, towards the final position. But the game was this, E4... You can imagine Beth playing e4. And now the Sicilian defense by Borgov. Knight f3, knight c6. We see the Rosalimo variation, bishop b5. So this is not the open Sicilian. When they talk about the open Sicilian in the series, they mean this, where white exchanges the center pawn for a flank pawn. It's a more open center. And it's a more, generally more tactical. But this is more strategic in nature, bishop b5. We see g6, c3, queen b6, a4, bishop g7, white castles. So white's kind of playing it as though it's kind of Roy Lopez, just establishing in that it's establishing a center quite quickly. Black dare not take this pawn. There's a lot of pressure if black takes this pawn with the king in the center. We see d6, rook e1, bishop g4, and now d5. White's gaining a nice space advantage, but has given up, you know, potentially a dangerous light square bishop. You know, that is without the counterpart. But because the position's kind of closed, the knights can actually be very effective here in more closed positions. We see a5, knight f6, knight bd2, black castles, h3, bishop takes knight takes so the bishop gives itself up anyway so we're we have the same kind of pieces knight and a dark square bishop each now knight d7 bishop f4 white seems to be keen on an e5 break at some point we see b5 trying to get some counterplay if rook f8 in fact knight d2 is a nice idea like as though one is playing against the benoni knight d2 knight c4 for example if e6 then this this race for a, a pawn storm on either side actually seems to favour white if we got, got this scenario, with white seemingly breaking up lines on the queen side with greater effect than black. If black doesn't have the light square bishop, it's difficult to crack white's king safety here. So anyway, we see b5, and we see a takes. So this fragments black's pawns, in particular this one's isolated. Rook a2, queen b5, knight d2, rook fb8, bishop g5. The king goes to protect e7. You might think that's rather odd, but at least it doesn't distract from the heavy pieces having to nanny the e7 pawn. We see queen g4, which is kind of nifty. Uh, it's putting pressure on d7. 
as queen h4 potentially h6 is played if knight e5 it seems as though queen h4 is good and if f6 well when i say good this is only about even this position actually technically if we got get this kind of position it's only about even so that's interesting so h6 though was played bishop e3 knight e5 queen h4 g5 queen h5 knight c4 h4 knight takes d2 bishop takes and now this is a mistake queen b3 this is the first clear mistake it seems if queen c4 then this should be interesting after g take after h takes g5 very interesting position indeed very dangerous for both sides but especially it seems well for black but the king if we get this kind of scenario it's it's even it seems dangerous but it turns out to be even but this is a mistake if we go back here and just question one or two things about this uh, here instead of bishop takes c3 then this is asking for trouble with the disconnection tactic e5 and white threatens queen h8 checkmate here and here rook takes again renewing the checkmate that'll be winning material uh so okay but anyway queen b3 is a mistake it seems as though even though black might be winning a pawn sometimes well black doesn't take on b2 with the queen plays queen c2 if queen takes b2 it seems as though rook ad1 hg this position is uh, going to be interesting for white more interesting for white than for black with a prospect of rook takes g7 as an example for bishop h6 and uh you know this is going to be better for, for white if queen takes then there's bishop h6 pinning the queen so anyway queen c2 was played not queen takes b2 and we have bishop c1 g takes and now bishop takes h6 and the king is in big trouble now actually bishop takes there's a king hunt queen g5 queen takes h4 threatening queen h8 checkmate we have king e8 the king makes run for it e5 very powerful d takes rook takes threatening queen takes e7 checkmate check f6 now d6 if f takes then there's queen takes e7 checkmate king d7 rook takes e7 check rook takes b1 queen takes f6 and the king is precariously placed white is two pawns up this is a huge pass pawn there's hooks like c7 this is fatal basically this is resignable and we see in the episode queen f3 and beth reluctantly having to resign she doesn't seem to re <laughs> resign in a very noble way i have to say <laughs> on this occasion she doesn't seem entirely happy she doesn't seem as though she's been accustomed to losing too many games throughout the series up till that point anyway yeah in the actual game it also ended here at move 40 with queen f3 so what would happen just for the record how does white concretely convert this well if check and rook b8 check here d7 this past pawn could be used for example like this for example like this the checks kind of run out and even if that's taken queen b7 make sure that pawn is queening so that's one variation another say c4 check queen takes c4 and rook c5 is just winning the queen yeah. it's just far too dangerous for king safety and um yeah and uh if you know rook takes c5 if sorry if king a5 so look at king a5 just rook takes c5 and here's a way of dragging the king down to be ultimately checkmated like this for example so we see the final moments of the game we see the queen f3 move which sealed the deal if we go back so uh the game ended at queen f3 beth having to resign Gasparov, I believe, who's behind these game choices, makes a remarkably nostalgic, historically important game choice, showing respect to Leonard Stein, a real champion. 
And he had opportunities which, unfortunately, because uh, there was a certain quota needed from the USSR, often he was qualifying for later stages of the World Championship, uh, you know, candidates for later stages. But because of the quota, he was denied uh, opportunity on occasion. So he was actually denied some major opportunities as well. But, you know, he, he won his fair share of tournaments and had fantastic records against top players. So let's remember Leonard Stein. Yes, great player as well which Kasparov is, in effect, highlighting by this game choice. OK, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, by the way, if you want to invite me for a game, just register at kingscrusher.tv slash chessmold, and I'll be able to invite you for a game soon after. If you want to check out my uh, course, recent courses, kingscrusher.tv slash chess tactics is getting a large number of students now with great reviews. You should check that out. It's over 20 hours of video content. You can become a tactical wizard, <clears throat> crushing kings. Kings Crusher TV slash London System, Kings Crusher TV slash Opening Tango. So check these links out. But in particular, I think a lot of people will benefit in particular with the tactics course. I've tried to make that awesome, mega awesome. So check out even just the index because I, I go over various tactical themes and also the processes that I personally think are really effective in my own games and I've been doing quite well with my own system <laughs> to quote Ninsovich my the King's Crusher system my King's Crusher system so King's Crusher TV slash chess tactics okay comments questions like share subscribe with the notification bell always appreciated and there's also a playlist by the way I'll put the link in uh, the description or the pinned comment so check out that okay thanks very much